Jap from Malaysia. Apa kabar macam MCO kamu? Yes, apa kabar rakyat Malaysia? I hope everyone is okay. I need did you read about Jane Christian Justin? Yes, I did. <laughs> she and her teammates won an award from the Special Education Network and in inclusive yeah. association and communicates only through sign language they Ooh. initiated a project called a vegan bond yeah. to raise public awareness on vegan lifestyle that is so for you elaine <laughs> that is so inspiring much like, yeah. amazing kan? when you hear this kind of news it makes yeah. malaysia it makes me proud it makes malaysia proud it's so inspiring <laughs> It really shows it doesn't take professionals to build a nation. But congratulations to Jane and her mates. I look forward to their vegan nuggets. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but no. Tuan tuan dan puan puan, COVID cases is increasing rapidly. So tolonglah a reminder to each and every one of you who are watching. Please, please take care of yourself. Pakai mask and rajalah sanitize tangan bila keluar. Kalau boleh, stay home lah. The Unity Show is a spin-off from the recent Unity movement that strives to unite the nation through the interest of our generation, regardless of political ideology, race or religion. Our mission is to come together as one and to spread hope, not hate. Unity, not division. Unity is what makes Malaysia strong. So let's keep the faith and spread that faith. Don't go away, guys. We'll be right back with our first guest of the night, Dato Sri Nazir Razak. Yes. The Unity Show. Pada malam ini kita ada tetamu istimewa. Beliau adalah Chairman and Founding Partner of Ikhlas Capital, former CIMB Group Chairman, the son of the second Prime Minister of Malaysia, sila beri tepukan yang gemuruh kepada Dato Sri Nazir Raza. Hi guys. Sri, how are you? Good, thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> That, um, that is right. Country, country. Tony was supposed to come on the show, but we're still waiting, lah. <laughs> yeah. We're still waiting. But I guess uh, with you being here first shows that you're a better player at FIFA than country. I'm, I'm, I'm just a better person. <laughs> I love it already. <laughs> I agree with that. Tiba like baca hashtag. Team uh, Datuk Sri Nazir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you all have to choose between me and Tony. Yeah? Uh, I think. Uh, It's safe to say I choose uh, Dato Sri lah. <laughs> I need, uh, yeah, I don't know you. <laughs> okay, bagi penonton yang tidak tahu, one fun fact mengenai Dato Sri is he is a big Game of Thrones. Betul ke Dato Sri? Correct me if I'm wrong. Because if you are, so am I. You know what they say about us women. Perempuan yang ada banyak personality. Jadi among my other personalities that I have, I'm secretly Khaleesi, a mother of dragons. <laughs> But how did you feel about the last episodes about everyone was talking about it? No, I think it was too rushed. It was too rushed, yeah. and I think they didn't do justice to these personalities that they painstakingly built over yeah, you know, seven agree. seasons, right? Well, seven so seasons, yeah. It's disappointing that way. But the, you know, the the the, the battle scenes uh, were quite incredible. So it worth was. watching, lah. Worth watching still. <laughs> Because I remember clearly how I reacted to that last episode. I had a long conversation dengan my friend who didn't actually watch Game of Thrones. So I had to explain to her kenapa semua orang was emosi dengan the last episode. Uh, because there were even forums on why was, you know, the ending of uh, season 7 macam tu. So it took me quite a few months to recover lah juga. But Dato Sri, are you watching anything new now? Uh, well, I just finished The Undoing, which is Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. It's a, it's a thriller oh. about a in New York. It's very good. Oh, it's on Astro. Okay, that's nice. We okay, that's three on top of yeah, on top of okay, on top of watching your newly binge series. Mungkin ramai di luar sana yang tak tahu tentang perkembangan terkini mengenai Datuk Sri. Jadi mungkin Datuk Sri boleh berkongsi secara ringkas dengan para penonton pada malam ini any of your activities or any initiatives that you are currently involved in. 
Okay, I mean, since I left CIMB, I, I, I do a lot of varied things. Lah. That's the beauty of uh, retiring from banking. Dulu, my, my life was one-dimensional, no? CIMB 24-7. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, on the investment side, I run a private equity uh, firm okay. where we invest in uh, companies across Southeast Asia. Okay. Um, and I have a partnership. There's four of us, uh, me, uh, uh, my ex-CFO, Kenny from CIMB, and then... Uh, Gita Wirawan, who's the former trade minister of Indonesia, and um, Sesa Purisima, who was the former finance secretary of Philippines, are all uh-huh. old friends. So we set up this fund yeah. uh, and we manage money on behalf of families yeah, uh, okay. and invest in companies all over the region. Uh, and then on the personal side, I also uh, do my own investments, uh, obviously smaller than the ones uh, in uh, uh, the E-Class does. E-class capital, yeah. uh, here I invest a lot in uh, uh, SMEs and uh, uh, startup companies, uh, mm. especially in the UK, actually. Oh, uh, why why UK? Uh, no, no, because I spend a lot of time there. Uh, my family is uh, largely based there, so uh, and 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 I happen to stay in Oxford, uh, oh, okay. and there they have a lot of uh, startup uh, companies, particularly in uh, uh, science and technology. Uh, so quite interesting uh, opportunities there. Uh, as you know, you know Oxford came up with uh, one of the uh, vaccines. Unfortunately, I didn't invest mm. in that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then on the uh, the more social side, I do a few things. Uh, some of you may have seen that you know I've been uh, campaigning uh, for uh, greater awareness uh, of prostate cancer. Uh, yes. That's one. Uh, Kemudian, I have this uh, project called uh, A Better Malaysia, uh, mm-hmm. where I'm working with a team to basically um, um, engage um, Malaysians widely. We had um, uh, panel sessions in KL, Penang, Sabah, Sarawak. Uh, to really discuss what are the key issues uh, and what can be done in order uh, for us to evolve a better nation. So a lot of that work is coming out or to be published in the next uh, couple of months. Mm, mm. Uh, so those are uh, probably my, 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 my four main activities now. Mm, okay. Uh, so speaking of initiatives you mentioned earlier about Only Man Can Campaign, boleh Datuk Sri berkongsi dengan kami tentang objective campaign ini and what is it about in detail? Yeah. So... Uh, I am uh, pemandiri atau survivor of prostate cancer. Yeah. Uh, so I had prostate cancer in uh, uh, 2019. I, I, I have fully recovered. Okay. Uh, and when I recovered, um, I, I, I realized that I wanted to give back. Uh, mm. Because I survived, I want other people to have uh, the same chance. And prostate cancer is, is something that is not well understood. Uh, mm. One is, it can kill you. Yes. But two is, um, it's very binary. If you discover it early, uh, yeah. then 90% of people survive. If you yeah. discover it late, uh, 25% of people survive. Yeah? So oh. it's simple. So you just have to discover it early, uh, which means that uh, you need to take those uh, precautionary steps to make sure that you uh, discover it if you have it. So if you're over 50, then you should test annually. Every year, go and test. Uh, oh, okay. It's just a blood test. Uh, and then also, if you have symptoms, uh, you have to uh, test. Symptoms, ni macam if you uh, uh, buy kecil too frequently uh, at, at night. Uh, oh, then, itu pun tak boleh, ya? No, then you have to check. It could okay. be prostate cancer. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, if you have uh, problems uh, uh, in bed, I mean, performing sexually, yeah. Uh, yeah. then you should check up. So, there's also a rule for women. I mean, if you know, your partner, for whatever reason, is suddenly uh, yeah. not uh, not uh, performing, mm, then mm, you mm, should mm. definitely tell him you better go and check up. Lah. Uh, yeah. And I, I wanted, to, so I'm out there talking about this publicly because, you know, Malaysians are very shy. That's true. Uh, and, cool. and and a lot of taboo lah when it comes to sexual matters and, sex, uh, you know, private parts and so on. And we yeah. discovered that in Malaysia, 60% of people discover prostate cancer at a late stage, which means, you know, many die. Yeah. Uh, whereas the international rate is only about 25%. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot more Malaysians die or suffer because they don't discover it early. Uh, so that's why I want to get the message out. It's about, it's about uh, awareness uh, and, and taking proper preemptive action. Uh, jadi bagaimana tercetusnya idea ni? Uh, you know, other than, okay, yes, uh, Datuk Sri, you know, survivor cancer, but how did you come up with, macam mana Datuk, uh, Datuk Sri terfikir untuk collaborate with uh, Rusli Malaya for this campaign? Yeah, no, I I, I, I basically uh, called some friends, a friend, and said, you know, I want to give back. What can I do? Uh, he is a urologist. Uh, 
he specializes in prostate cancer. So right. he brought he brought the five top uh, uh, doctors in uh, uh, urology uh, to my house, and we sat down. So I asked them about the situation. And they said, "Look, there's a lot you can do. There's a lot you can help." Um, so I did. Uh, so first of all, I I, I, I raised money uh, for uh, the campaign, and then uh, of course I put myself out there. Uh, speaking about it uh, very very publicly. I mean, you you would have seen me. I even went on the program called Meletok. Yeah, I know. I saw. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I said no. I said I don't want to. I don't want to go on this program, right? Because it just doesn't look like me. And then they showed me yeah. the data that up to one million people uh, watch this program. Yeah. Said, no, how can I say no, right? If I can, yeah. I can actually engage one million people. I have to do it. Yeah. For this yeah. awareness, ya yeah, betul. Jadi macam mana kami atau para penonton yang sedang melihat segmen ini berminat untuk melibatkan diri dengan uh, kempen ini? No, kempen ini um, tak adalah cuma cuma uh, dari segi um, uh, support uh, and and advice that you can give to your friends, partners dan lain-lain lah. Uh, okay. That means you know uh, awareness ni yang, yang penting. Uh-huh. Um, Jadi mungkin kalau dah nampak simptom tu awal-awal Mungkin tak perlu brushing off lah Mungkin boleh kata okay, Mungkin kita patut get it checked yes. You know it could yeah. be yeah. something serious Yes Yes hmm. okay, Dato' Sri Ya Dato' Sri memangnya topik Cancer ni adalah topik yang agak sensitif untuk dibincangkan Jika Dato' Sri tak keberatan Maybe Dato' Sri boleh bercerita tentang pengalaman Being a cancer survivor well, Cancer survivor What does it mean? It means that you have uh, Come to terms of your mortality lah And then uh, you know you go through periods. You worry about your family. What happens? Yeah. You know if if the worst happens and so on and so forth. So when you come out of it, it's about you know um, changing. It's about mm. knowing what is important yeah. to you and knowing what who is important to you. Yeah. Uh, and then you 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 change your priorities in life accordingly. How long was the sessions? The recover the the recovery sessions. Was it long? Uh, well. You know, I discovered it um, confirmed in December 2018. Uh, I had uh, then when they discovered it, they said it's it's, it's rather uh, aggressive, so you have to have surgery immediately. Uh, so I had surgery in February, and then I think you know recovery took about five six months. Oh, okay, okay, you and then and then everything was okay. Uh, you you know you datuk Sri boleh. Uh, Jalankan kehidupan harian seperti biasa. It's not affecting you, you know. Macam tak, dia tak dibuka limitation for you to do anything in your daily activities. I, 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 I was very lucky, and as I said, because I was lucky, I thank um, the Almighty for that, and I want to give back so that other people have a, a chance of being as lucky as me. Hmm. Okay. Okay, jadi kepada para penonton khususnya pihak lelaki, prostate cancer is one of the most treatable forms of cancer dengan survival rate of more than 90% as mentioned earlier and can be ini mengetengahkan early detection. Prevention is better than cure they say. Jadi kepada pihak lelaki di luar sana, jangan takut untuk menjalankan pemeriksaan kesihatan awal. That's right. Thank you. That, Thank you. <laughs> Dato Sri, uh, now that we have you on the show, we want to take this opportunity to learn something from you, from your experience, from your career, and probably the economy. We can't seem to run away from politics, but um, my question is, what made you choose banking instead in the beginning? <laughs> no, I think politics only became an option late. Uh, in my career, I mean, I think you know when I came back uh, after my um, studies, um, I joined banking really as an opportunity to learn about business. Mm. Uh, okay. It was a stepping stone. Uh, tapi then I realized that actually it's not a stepping stone; it's my calling. I enjoyed banking. Uh, I think I was quite good at it. Yeah. Uh, so rather than the plan, original plan of being in banking for two years, I stayed for 29 years, uh, and Ooh. so. Uh, so politics only became an option or, or a consideration um, in around 2015 uh, when okay. I was very um, upset uh, about what was going on at 1MDB. Mm. So then I seriously contemplated going into uh, politics uh, around that time. Mm. Uh, and um, um, But I consulted uh, and uh, two women uh, basically advised me Uh, wow. uh, one was um, a lady called uh, Professor Nairi Woods, who is the dean of the School of Government in Oxford. She's a yeah. good friend of mine, and she said, "Look, she understands why I feel this way, but she says even those people who support you will never fully trust you 
if you are one person who can politically challenge his own brother. That's her that advice yeah. to me. Oh, then the other nice. lady was Tan Sri Rafida Aziz. Oh, okay. Who I consulted and she said, look, again, I totally understand where you're coming from, but you can't do it uh, because it will upset your mother, period. Uh, so that was uh, a good advice. Uh, so I, I never went into politics. I never oh. went into politics. Okay. I stayed in banking and of course, yeah, uh, I, I, I am where I am now. Right. That's actually a good, good advice from, from uh, these two women. Um, but for the benefit of the youth with no economy background, uh, what do you need to know or what are the key points of the current economic condition with the pandemic in Malaysia? That is really, are, we, are we in trouble? Mm. <laughs> I think every country is in trouble. This is, this is severe. This is severe. And in every country, you have seen economic lots of economic activity stop uh, mm. and uh, over over prolonged periods right and at the same time this is global unlike the global financial crisis when china was still growing strongly or the asian financial crisis when the west was growing strongly so there's no engine uh, of growth uh, in the world uh, today right yeah. um, so uh, it is uh, extremely uh, severe and of course to also point out that you know the vaccine isn't a you know immediate cure right? yeah uh, as we thought it would take time uh, mm. basically uh, spread uh, across uh, the world yeah so recovery uh, in 2021 will be slower uh, than originally expected so you know uh, last year of course the, the economy shrank this year we expect the economy to grow uh, but probably mm. not as much as we thought as uh, yeah. overall i think we will be lucky uh, to be where we were uh, at the end of 2019, economically. Now, um, that's the big. That's the big picture. Uh, yeah. the, the the micro picture is, of course, this um, pandemic, this economic downturn has affected uh, the young, has affected those less fortunate uh, mm. much more uh, than uh, uh, the, the wealthier. Uh, mm. You can imagine, you know, when you have savings, you have buffer. You're you're not yeah. uh, so affected. That's one. Tapi two, uh, what a lot of people miss is the fact that the way the economy, economy has been kind of pumped, uh, if you like, in terms of you know, low interest rates and monetary policy and all that, yeah. is actually st save the financial markets. You look at stock markets, it's still flying. Yeah. yeah. So what does that mean? That means people with financial, with shares, with financial assets are doing okay. okay. Yeah, but people who okay. lose their jobs, who you know have their pay cuts, uh, yeah. are still doing very, very badly and getting yeah. worse. Are the unfortunate ones yeah. yeah so this this gives rise to a lot of policy issues uh that you know governments need to grapple with uh and it's very serious uh and you know i i feel that uh, the young now certainly need a lot of uh, support uh into yeah. the situation they've not had time to build up reserves uh, mm -hmm. and then they get hit by this uh, crisis they've been studying for years spending on their education and suddenly they can't find yeah. jobs yeah uh, there's so much to do uh, uh on that front it pains me to hear that, but uh, since we're in a pandemic again, um, what, what should we do? I mean, I myself and the youth. What what should we do and to focus on to survive the pandemic, knowing uh, how things are. Well, the first thing you must do is not catch it. <laughs> Stay negative. Stay negative. Guys. They say. Stay yes. negative. <laughs> Stay negative. That's a good way of saying it. Uh, but I think there are two things now. One is what you should do for yourself. Uh, and two is what you should try and uh, move uh, others to do. Right? Mm. Firstly, in terms of what you should do for yourself, I think you need to think about the future. Uh, I think you need to think about uh, the new normal, as they like to say. Uh, what yeah. I don't think this, I think this pandemic um, will change uh, uh, the way we live, the way we work. Uh, mm -hmm. sure. There was a uh, uh, Lenin who once famously said, he said. Uh, there can be decades when nothing happens and suddenly weeks when decades happen. Uh, and I think that's what's happening now. Uh, and mm -hmm. clearly after this crisis, what you're going to see is, you know, um, people who work from home more. Mm -hmm. People are more comfortable with uh, 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 doing everything digitally. Uh, mm -hmm. I think people will be more obsessed with uh, healthcare and hygiene. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, and um, people may want to, uh, people will, will probably travel more because as in for tourism, not for work, yeah. but for tourism. So these are the kind of uh, uh, changes that I think will happen. There will be more. And I think um, people should think about how to position themselves uh, into those um, changes uh, in terms of business or in mm. terms of occupation. Kemudian, I think that the youth need to actually campaign uh, for uh, a change in the social contract in terms of uh, the contract between the government and the people that they govern. Uh, okay. Sorry, it's a bit, it's a bit highbrow saying this, yeah. <laughs> but it's really about you know what are the principles of uh, inclusion. Uh, yeah. That means you know, particularly in terms of taxation, you know who's going to pay for all these deficits. Uh, yeah. that has been incurred during this crisis. Uh, kemudian, you know, even things like redistribution. You know, I, 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 I was uh, quite in favour of uh, this thing Muda was campaigning for, which is oh, yes. uh -uh. windfall tax. You know, I really yeah. think that they should have introduced the windfall tax. And uh, that means people who made super normal profits, like the glove companies, uh, yeah. we allocate some of that profit to those people who were super affected by the... Yes. Uh, by the yeah, pandemic, pandemic. You know, the so, B40 and, uh, and the frontliners and all that, I think that should have okay. been done to a greater scale. Some was yeah. done uh, uh -huh. to a greater scale. And I think, you know, going forwards also, should there be capital gains tax? Should there be wealth tax? Uh, these are some of the things that you know, we need to think about as we, you know, uh, uh, change the principles of how um, a country uh, is, is being run in the interest of being more inclusive uh, and more caring for for people. For people. Yeah. Uh, Datuk Sri, bila kita bercakap mengenai pandemik, uh, tadi Datuk Sri ada, ada mention about anak muda, kita tak boleh elakkan topik pengangguran. It's like they go together and it's certainly not something new and it definitely contributed to an increase of unemployment rate in Malaysia. Jadi kepada mereka yang terjejas, apa Datuk Sri rasa yang mereka boleh lakukan di masa sukar ini? Memanglah tak, tak, sekarang ni tak cukup uh, pekerjaan. Tak cukup kerjaan. Ha -ha. Kita tak boleh lari daripada fak, uh, faktor uh, itulah. Tapi jadi uh, my my only advice is uh, for the young. Kalau you tak ada kerja buat masa ni, uh, you kena you 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 patut uh, fikir pasal uh, pelajaran lah, uh, reskilling, uh, hmm. fikir pasal uh, seperti saya cakap tadi new normal. New normal. Uh, macam yeah. mana nak prepare diri sendiri uh, untuk the new normal untuk cari kerja. Uh, yang uh, lebih uh, uh, lebih banyak uh, semas, uh, selepas pandemik ni. Yeah, yeah, it is certainly a tough tough time for fresh graduates juga, as they need to you know face years at least a couple of years of uh, hmm. reduced pay, limited prospects, and job mismatches. But what would your advice be to them so they will not be demotivated? Tak nak putus so, asa. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that, you know, this shall pass. This shall pass. Mm. Uh, the pandemic uh, will disappear uh, eventually. Mm. It will take mm. longer than we thought. It will, it will pass. So you have to take this opportunity, this window to strengthen yourself. Mm -mm. Yeah. Cuma ni darah anak muda kan darah yeah. anak muda Datuk Sri orang panggil saya dia apa macam nak cepat nak cepat nak cepat nak cepat nak tengok result cepat nak tengok perubahan cepat jadi macam ah oh, bila dah kita dah on top of our career kita dah baru kita baru graduate kita baru okay yeah. I'm ready for the career life tiba pandemik jadi jadi terus macam yeah. alamak macam mana ni No lah I mean there are a lot of facts about the pandemic we all have to stay home yes. cannot go out you know uh, uh, you know play golf <laughs> uh, so we all have to change our our expectations, lifestyles for the pandemic. But don't don't get uh, demotivated. It's an opportunity to take on more courses. I mean, teaching online has been this great boom of the pandemic. So you can take degrees, take courses online. Online, yeah, yeah. But I got kan? Yeah. I got menakut kan actually Datuk Sri. So, but when we think about unemployment. At the same time, we also have these, you know, young and fresh grads. Just the thought of them starting their working life in a massive global recession. Sekarang, so, kalau ikutkan, in times of crisis macam ni lah, they will be the first to lose their jobs. Itu kerana orang pun maybe ah nak kerja ke tak? Kerja ke tak? I, I understand, and you know, I remember when I came back in 1989, it was mm. Malaysia was just coming out of recession, mm. right? And it was quite scary. So when you get your job, you hold on to yeah, it. Yeah, you hold on to it. Yeah. With your life, <laughs> uh, and you know, there were many of my friends who couldn't get a job. 
uh, yeah. at, uh, at that time and you know they, they they some of them just went back and studied again and so on and so forth to wait for opportunities opportunities will come mm-hmm. they will come. so now it's a time to improve on yourself yes yes certainly certainly and also you know you may in the process find that you can actually do new things you can innovate uh, in business you can think of you know being creative online etc there are many ways of uh, uh, starting a career cuma kita je kena 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 keluar kena keluar kena fikir kita anak muda yeah. tak boleh you know tak boleh fikir satu satu jalan itu je jalan dia kita kena fikir out of the box creative lah kan uh-huh. cari jalan lain <laughs> But at Delta Street, the, the country has declared state of emergency to instill confidence in the foreign investors during this difficult time. Looking at the market data, in my understanding, I might be wrong, please correct me, it slightly improved when it was announced? Well, your I, views? I, you know, <laughs> the market is driven by many things. Um, mm. I wouldn't say that you can link it so easily. Straight to state of emergency. Yeah. And there's certainly not been any dramatic uh, moves it goes up and down so often i think the emergency you know is 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 was declared for the pandemic right uh, okay. that is the reason uh, and i think that um, <clears throat> you know they, they you can debate uh, whether it was the right thing to do it was necessary mm. or not but you know i was just about to get to that point do you think it's necessary <laughs> and then you jump in more importantly it's done Yeah, yeah. And we are an emergency, and I think you know what we have to acknowledge. We have to remember that emergency is inherently unnatural and uh, unstable mm. as a form of government. Yeah, I must always remember that. Yeah. Okay. For a temporary period, uh, it's okay. It okay. can bring stability. You know, politics was getting out of hand and so on. Yeah. So it brings stability because we have to deal with pandemic, but it cannot last long. You okay. know, it, it is a very, very dangerous. Uh, state of affairs. Uh, Tun Razak, my late father, when he was um, he declared emergency. Yes, yeah, the back then, yeah. He was uh, uh, practically a dictator. He famously said, "You know, if you want to serve the people, too much power is no good." Mm. Uh, and yeah. then he returned the country to democracy. Democracy uh, in, in in parliament, and I think you know there are <laughs> there are. Uh, 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 Psycholo- uh, psychology um, based studies that mm. show that actually power you know they're the saying that power corrupts right yes. there's studies to show that what happens is people with power actually naturally have this erosion of empathy mm. and ironically empathy is actually what you need to lead yes right so there's there's you know there's 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 reason for this saying power corrupts Uh, and you have emergency rule like this you don't have checks and balances mm. uh, it's very very dangerous yeah mm. so my my view is that okay uh, it's done yeah. uh, and you know politics was getting quite crazy you know yes, i agree think about the pandemic right malaysia today has somewhat lost control of the pandemic because of politics, politics. and it's yeah. in 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 your 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 home state right in Sabah yes. that's where it started and you know it got worse and worse all because of politics uh, we have been slow in doing many things because of politics uh, so it's in the end of the day if you suspend politics for now okay lah yeah but don't suspend for too long uh, because too much power is very very dangerous i mean if you look across history mm. many many dictatorships started with the most benign reasons Yeah, mm. everything looked like good intentions, but once people get power, uh, then it's very dangerous. Mm. Uh, do you think a uh, state of emergency is affecting our economy, or does that make it worse? No, in the short term, I think it's okay because you know we taking out politics, right? Uh, we're very focused in dealing with this pandemic. Uh, I think in the short term, it's okay. Uh, so as long as I would not have done it, prolong it. I would not have done it, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you want me to put it that way, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have done I, it. I wouldn't have done it. I don't think we needed it, but it's done. Yeah. Uh, okay. and, you know, I think it's at the margin in terms of argument, but it, it's done. Just you know, let's not do it for too long because, as I keep saying, you cannot operate in a situation of this kind of absence of checks and balances. It's very, very dangerous. How long is too long, Datuk Sri? When you say too long, how long is too long? How long is too long? Well, I. Th- You know, to me, it should definitely not exceed. You know, the constitution constitution says you should review every six months. 
okay. so you definitely should not uh, exceed that lah inshallah okay, so but obviously okay. to really solve the political problem you need a general election mm, mm, yeah. mm. Uh, that's what the 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 thinking is so that mm. uh, Uh, should not be done in a pandemic. You have a GE in a pandemic, people die. That's what happened yeah. in Sabah. So yeah. we do not want that. Uh, so then it's a balance. Like you may have to extend it if, if the pandemic uh, is still ongoing. So Malaysia ni, when we became independent in 1957, mm. we took the British system. I don't know why, right? We took the British system only because they were our colonial masters. Yeah. Yeah. And that system didn't survive three elections, right? In 1969, the system collapsed. We went into state of emergency, and I, you know, the 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 leaders then said that Alama, we are killing each other, right? So I need to change the system. So they changed the system, but they knew that this new system was not properly tried and tested. But mm. we need to do something, yeah, because you know we have to stop the killing. So they put this new system, and this new system, they said, including the new economic policy, they said 20 years. Yeah. Right. And today, 50 years is still around. It's still around. So I think we need to go through a process like we did in 1970 of redesigning the system for mm. today's Malaysia, for today's challenges. Right? Mm. This is what my project is about. Mm. Right? I mean, the, the main problem is, are we willing to go, you know, are we willing to have that change? We have to. We have to, I think. But otherwise, we will continue in this state of dysfunctional politics, uh, sub economic growth, uh, divided communities, and angry Sabahan and Sarawakians. Betul, betul. Yeah, kita, kita berpusing, pusing. Yeah. And when is going to stop? When betul. is it going to stop? But um, that, that is really the most elusive of all things in a democracy is unity. Do you still believe in it? Would you? Would there ever be unity in this country if there is no economic prosperity for all Malaysians? No, I think you need to uh, uh, frame it slightly differently because unity and democracy not necessarily have to come together. I think mm. what we do need is um, a more united nation. Nation. Right. Our nation building project um, has stalled. Right. Today, if you look back, if you look at it, we remain strongly um, Chinese, Malay, Indian, uh, and 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 others. Right? Mm. Uh, we remain strongly that way, and actually, we are we are we are. Uh, living together but growing apart. Yeah. That's a good. Yeah. Betul, betul. I believe that. We need to think about how to create this sense of unity. Yeah. yeah. What does it take? And I think unity uh, means you know better policies at uh, integrating communities, but also uh, more inclusive policies uh, socially. I think you know the trouble is when people are unemployed, uh, they're underfed, they get angry, they blame race. Betul. Right? Yeah, and that's not the problem, yeah. right? Uh -uh. Uh, so we need to, again, as I said much earlier, we need to think on the tax framework, etc., to be more uh, inclusive, right? So that everybody has a better stake uh, in this nation. But of course, in between the uh, races and religions, we need to think of a new way forwards. And you know, and, I, and why I'm doing this Better Malaysia project is as follows: because it's very difficult to reform things in isolation, right? If mm -hmm. you say Okay, I want to just do um, MA63. Say mm. the problem every time is then the, the the support base for the political leaders in Peninsular Malaysia will go against them. If you say you want to introduce UEC, you remember the UEC controversy. Mm. Well, it's in favor of the Chinese, so the Malays will just get angry. Yeah, but though, right. Yeah. If you want to wipe out vernacular schools, right, uh -uh. The Chinese will get angry. So if you do need satu one by one, tak boleh. One by one, ha -ha, ha -ha, you need to put everything on the table. They say, okay, we want to do this. You know, for the Malays, we give you ha -ha. this. We take ha -ha. away this. So this yeah, is. Ha -ha. Are they give and take? Are they give and take? Ah, kita kena buat new deal. So ha -ha, this is why I reflect back in 1970. Kita uh, under Tun Razak then he set up a something called a National Consultative Council. Yes. Uh -uh. It took 67 of yeah. Malaysia's. You know, leaders and best and brightest, and they put them in a room, yeah, over yeah. you know over several days, uh, several times uh, over a few months, and they debated like yeah. hell, right? But gado gado in that room, but no record, nah, no minutes, nothing. You can say what you want. Oh. Uh, and then in that process, they reconstructed uh, the nation, which is, I think, a process that we need to do now. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, I, I, ironically, even in the West, people are questioning um, the the type of democracy people have now. That 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 is ongoing now. You know, yeah. the, what is democracy actually? If you remember originally, democracy in Athens was actually uh, the members of the public going to the agora and debating and then voting themselves. Yeah. So over the years, democracy now we elect somebody, <laughs> and he decides for us. On yeah. everything for four to five years. Yeah. He decides yeah. everything. Yeah. Does he decide because yeah. he knows what you want? No. He decides based on what his party tells him to do. Betul. Right? Rather than or, yeah, rather than what the rakyat rakyat nak. That's right. Or what is in his political interest because elections are coming. Betul. Betul. So that's a breakdown there. So in the West, in in Ireland, in Belgium, they also have been setting up these national consultative councils. Right, as a way of dealing with long-term structural issues like Mm-mm. communal relations, like religion, etc., you cannot deal with those in parliament. But the you know, parliament, they all, you know, they they they, they worry about them their, their, their own political interests. If you Betul. set up a group and you just tell this group, okay, wherever you come from, just think about what is um, good for Malaysia, and then Betul. we make decisions like that. But so about kita. Uh... I realize uh, it, with Malaysia kita terlalu combine government and politics to it's to together. I mean yes, they should be much related tapi to an extent. Tapi now it's becoming out of control. Yes. And it, interesting, you know, in Ireland they set up this national assembly, right? Mm. Hey, to debate the issue of abortion, legalizing abortion. Mm. You know how controversial legalizing abortion is in a Catholic country. Yes. And then this group This assembly, they all got together. They debated, 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 and then they went back to parliament and said, "Okay, uh, we recommend legalizing abortion." Mm. And then the parliament said, "Are you crazy? The public <laughs> never go for it." So they said, "Referendum lah." So when they went for referendum, two thirds of the public said, uh, "Voted in favor of legalizing abortion." What does that mean? That means the parliament or the elected representatives are so detached yes, from the population, from the population, from the right. Yeah, yeah, betul, betul. Okay, Datuk Sri, kita beralih pula kepada something less serious. I actually have a personal question from a very good friend of mine. Uh, she's currently working in London. I actually have a sticker note. Takut I lupa nak tanya. Uh, because when she found out you were coming on the show, she made me promise that I will ask you this question. Um, so, bagi mereka yang tak tahu, you became the CEO of CIMB Group at quite a very young age. And that is such an inspiration to a lot of youth. My friend, for example. Jadi apa top three advice Datuk Sri bagi mereka yang mengidamkan cita-cita itu? You know, for someone who shares the same career aspiration. Uh, yeah, I became CEO at uh, 32. Uh, yeah. and I, That's young. I, it was young. Uh, yeah. And uh, in fact, when I was first recommended as CEO, Bank Negara rejected. They said, too young. <laughs> I had to appeal. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, You know, I, I, and I reflect back uh, on what was important. Now, one is, of course, you have to uh, work hard. That's that's a given. Mm-hmm. Two, I think, uh, what's important is uh, you need to strategize mm-hmm. for the future as it is, rather than the future as you want it to be. Right. So you have to be realistic about your forecast. And sometimes, you know, this is why a lot of people come to me and say, "Oh, I want a career in banking." Well, I yeah. ask them just because I had a good career in banking, does it mean that you should? Because the world has changed. Betul. Yeah. Today, yeah. I'm not sure when. You know, I had I lived the golden age of banking, right? Now, yes. banking is very different to what it was then. And third, I think most importantly is I think that I have this thing. You remember that Michael Jackson song, "Man in the Mirror." Oh yes. Yeah. I always give this advice, lah. I think every few days, if not every day, I would look in the mirror. Oh. And ask myself, you know, what are my own strengths and weaknesses? Okay. Right? And that's very important. And always remember that you have to do it frequently because your own strengths and weaknesses changes. Changes, uh, betul. Over. Kita and, berubah ikut keadaan juga. And then, bila you tahu your own weakness. Mm. And you must take action to mitigate them, right? So much I, when I became CEO very young, what did yeah. I do? I put a lot of not young people around me, oh. right? because I knew I was hot tempered, I was brash, I was oh. in a rush. Yeah, so I had to have these mature people oh, around this, me to say, "Hey, yeah, hey, chill, yeah. man, chill." 
uh, I semua nak, you know, I wanted everything yesterday, right? So, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and just like anything, and also, you know, if you look at yourself and say, okay, I'm, 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 you know, um, this is what I look like, this is my background, etc. Mm. So, I must create teams of people who are different backgrounds, speak differently, engage. Betul. So, you know, this creating teams mm. that uh, make you more powerful. You know, the human instinct is cloning. Cloning is the most uh, basic human instinct. We want to work with people who look like us, who talk like us, who go and eat like us. Uh, eat, you know, where we want to eat. Yes. So, yeah, senang untuk kita handle. Yeah, so people who you enjoy spending time with are, least, are, most, are least likely to help you create a stronger team. That's a, actually that's a good one. I'm taking notes sebab lepas ni I have to report back to my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you suruh dia watch je. Tapi like, sebab different I, time zone kan? So different time oh, zone. Yeah, so yeah, betul, straight betul, after. Ada <laughs> replay. No, Hantar video lah. Hantar replay. <laughs> I'm actually I'm taking notes to ID. <laughs> Datuk Sri, uh, our sincerest condolences on the passing of your mum, Tun Raha. Tun Raha was our first lady in 1970. Mm-hmm. I'm sure growing up, there were a lot of memories uh, with you and Arwah Tun. What was her most valuable advice that you hold on to until today? Yeah, thank you. She uh, Incidentally, today is the 40th day. Oh, uh, cukup oh. 40 hari. Okay. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we cannot have a gathering. Gathering, yeah. Uh-uh. No, I mean, I think she was a, a, a you know wonderful lady, and I think what strike what I remember most <clears throat> is her fairness. Mm. She had this obsession with being fair, and you know, she had five sons. Mm. And today, I can tell you, none of us would know who her favorite son. No, <laughs> none of us. We cannot. Because she was very fair, everything had to follow rules. Oh, she never showed partiality or preference. Not she even was... a little bit. Tak, memang tak nampak langsung. And 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 also, you know, her love was unconditional. You know, I know. Mm. You know, when even when she doesn't like something, she's angry with you. After you call up, you say, "I'm coming to makan," and she will lay out uh, whatever food she knows you like, which for me is I'm boring. Uh, and 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 you know, so so, so so that was her. Everything had to be fair. Uh, and she was she provided a, a home that was always open to us whenever. Mm. Mm, that's so warming to to know a different yeah, mungkin side apa tu uh, yang kita tak tahu dengan arwah. Yeah, a different side, Arthur, a different yeah, side. Betul. Datuk Sri, ya, yeah, Datuk Sri malangnya kita tak mempunyai masa lagi untuk bercerita, untuk berkongsi pendapat. It is truly an honor to have you on our show. I really Thank learned you. so much from tonight. Uh, pasal ekonomi, pasal for investment, pasal market. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure myself and Elaine and penonton pada malam ini can agree with me on that. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on the show, Datuk Sri. Uh, till next time. All right. <laughs> stay safe. Take stay care. negative juga. <laughs> Thank you, Datuk Sri. Bye. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Mengapa tempoh sampai bila kena cinta Dan kenal mengalah Memana masuk hatiku yang reti Setelah kau nampak tetap ku masih menunjukkan erti hidupku Yang kau bersama kau buat selamanya Hatiku Mahumu Rupamu Masih, 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 masih Kau terindah Masih ada Yang tercantik Itu kamu Kau terindah Masih ada Yang tercantik Itu kamu Kamu, 
Itu kamu Itu kamu Itu kamu Itu kamu Kau terindah Masih ada Yang terjadi to the show our next guest is from america tapi dia malaysian uh, ladies and gentlemen something we need to be proud of he is a senior research technologist in nasa i know, Woo, I know. So, i'm all about interstellar movie i need <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen uh, please let me welcome you dr darman Hi, Dr. Hi. Darwin. Welcome to Hi. our show. How are you? Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, what time is it there? Thank you for coming on the show. It's early, very early in the morning. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, being with us. I know we know it's really early. <laughs> thank you for having me. Uh, okay, uh, Doctor, I have I have to ask. How fluent is your Bahasa? Because you have been living in America for a while now, haven't you? Yes, I have. In fact, if I if I count by years, I think it has been exactly half of my life. Um, and my, my Malay Obasa is pretty poor now. Um, I can understand, but yeah. um, I'm probably not going to speak very, very well. well. I was about to ask you, how old are you? But uh, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> Age is just a number, especially for men. Yes. yes. <laughs> for women? <laughs> Okay, bagi mereka yang mungkin terlepas di earlier part of the segment, Elaine, Dr. Darmin adalah senior research technologist di NASA. So, Doctor, it would be amazing if you could share with our audience tonight about your job and how it's like working at NASA. Sure, I'd be happy to. So, um, uh, NASA is a very uh, diverse um, um, research organization at in the US. Um, mm. we- a lot of different things in regards to space uh, technology and, and research. Um, in the early days, um, in the 20s and 30s, NASA was all about launching rockets to space and yeah. technology has been well uh, established and, and developed now. So today, <clears throat> NASA does a lot of um, uh, sensors and robotics, uh, satellites and, and probes that go to other planets like Mars or um, Or, or beyond the, the even the solar system in some yeah. cases. And our goal is really to, to, to investigate um, 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 different planets, different environments and study the universe um, and the space of the of, of, uh, and science of the universe as well. So in my role at NASA, I develop and formulate uh, concepts for mm. all the radar uh, technology that NASA uses. So wow. uh, that There are many different sensors as part of these various missions yeah. and integral um, uh, sensors that they often use on all of these missions is uh, what's known as radars. They are basically a sensor that generates a certain type of signal and permits you to detect something about the environment. It could be used for remote sensing. For example, yeah. um, on Earth, it's used to study the topography of the planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, study ice in Mars. Um, it, it was to find um, water in Mars. Yeah. yeah. And in oh, so many that's how water planets, was found on Mars. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. The radars that were used to find water in Mars um, that were um, about 20 kilometers um, uh, expected to be as, as much as 20 
a kilometer beneath the surface. Like, actually, that was the first, the first evidence. So these techniques can, um, you know, penetrate deep into the the subsurface, depending on how it's designed, or just study the surface, um, or in some cases be used to study just the atmosphere and ionosphere and things like that. So that. Uh, there are many different applications of these class of radar sensors, and they span a variety of different types of uh, techniques and waveforms and frequencies. So I lead the group at NASA JPL that uh, 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 develops these concepts and mm. propose them as part of these uh, missions or projects. Um, and as okay. I it's a very diverse okay. team. <laughs> wow. Um, I know. Uh, I was like, it, okay, this, this might, okay, this question might sound technical but what was the most complicated uh mission that you've been on like or you know like because you're you're involved in uh building creating radars right you're in you're involved in radar so what was the most complicated mission is that um, the task the, day, the thing yeah. i think i can i can say that probably the most complicated mission that i've um i've been helping out with is the OASIS uh, uh, mission, which is still um, halfway through um, planning um, and, and development. It's a mission to, to send a probe um, um, uh, to a planet where we would study uh, water and ice that is as deep as 30 kilometers beneath the, the planet and oh, wow. running oh. into a lot of challenges trying to figure out if we could, uh, if the techniques we've been developing could indeed operate in that environment. One of the challenges about doing planetary uh, mm -hmm. science is that, you know, we don't know about the environment because Forever, we've never... Yes. Yeah. And so um, a lot of work is needed to help us uh, understand first what these environments may look like before we can develop sensors uh, that can operate in those environments. So it is a very challenging mission. Um, our goal there is to uh, find uh, water because um, a lot of evidence um, um, uh, tells us that, that there may be large bodies of water. And NASA is very interested in finding uh, signs of life, basically. Right. And this is the reasons we are interested in, 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 in this mission. But it's, um, it's very challenging and takes a lot of uh, effort to, to help us design the right sensors to find evidence of life, basically. Now I'm really wondering how That's old so are you? <laughs> Okay, but uh, doctor, did, did you have any expectations prior working at NASA and did, uh, did it exceed your expectations? Is it better than what you imagined? Yeah, I think I, it, it has exceeded my expectations. Um, I never um, envisioned that working in NASA would be as, um, as, as exciting and diverse. I think the diverse is also oh. a very important word. Um, I really find that for me, I, I thrive in a little bit of diversity because I, it's easier for me to fit in uh, with me and there are others that can challenge the way I think. And I think I've been very lucky and happy to find that, you know, working in NASA has the right type of uh, diversity that I was, uh, I was looking for in, in a workplace. Um, thing I wanted to say is that the type of work that we do at NASA is uh, very exciting because it's always trying to push the boundary of what we know how to do today. Mm -hmm. So I never find myself in a in a situation where I'm I'm uh, attempting to do something I already know how to do. So every day is a new challenge, something different. Um, and 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 part of that is also we are permitted to create. Um, um, on our own ideas, which is very helpful as a That's researcher. Interesting, very interesting. Constraining a researcher to, to, to do work that um, someone else might be interested, we get to help develop and, um, and, and, and infuse these missions. So we propose these missions, um, you know, and some are selected, some are not, but we are mm -hmm. part of the process. Um, so it's really a, 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 a bottom up approach, which is what is very exciting, I think, for uh, the situation. But I see. Are there a lot of Malaysians at the... Uh... I have not found one yet. Oh, so... you have not found one? So, so you're yeah. the only, you're one, the only the one. one. The chosen one. My, to my knowledge, but I, I, I find that very hard to digest. Really? So, there's a Malaysian somewhere out there and I just haven't huh. found it. Ha, Doc, has it always been your dream to work at uh, NASA? 
I mean, because no, I mean, I... I mean, a lot of people, we just watch movies and you know, yeah. with, the, yeah. with NASA, 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 NASA and now we're actually NASA, NASA, yeah. talking to what we know for now, the only Malaysian working at NASA. So has it always been your dream? No, I, I mean, I grew up being very excited about uh, engineering and science. I, uh -huh. I got a kid from my dad. And I think I was very uh, into it because he yeah. exposed me to certain certain things that caught my, uh, my interest. But um, NASA was a very organic thing for me because I only started um, uh, learning about the work that they did, um, mm -hmm. getting more excited about the research that they do when I was in graduate school here in the US. Uh, so yeah. it was more of an organic uh, process um, that gotten me to where I am today, basically in, in, in NASA. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly will say I did not grow up thinking I wanted to go work thinking. in NASA. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at okay. you now. <laughs> I know, the fact that you didn't even expect, you know, like it, yeah. it wasn't even something that you dream of. Like, you know, kids these days, they they talk about, oh, I want to be an astronaut, I want to I wanna, I wanna fly to the moon. And you're just like, no, it just it came to me organically. Yeah. Uh, it sort of just happened. And yeah. I'm sort of just winging it now. <laughs> <laughs> but doctor, how was the interview like? Um, were there a lot of stages that you have to go through? Well, so there was many years ago. Um, <laughs> That's 15 years there ago. There were multiple stages and it was quite intense. Uh, the how intense was intense? Say that again? How intense was intense? Well, they're questioning your um, the, the work that you've done, um, the research that you have done. For me, I applied after a postdoctorate degree. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I had done a PhD and then a, a postdoctorate and then I applied. So I had done quite a bit of work uh, um, uh, back then already. Mm -hmm. And so there was ample chance for people to poke and ask questions and uh, see, you know, what truly is the impact of your work and um, how well do you understand the field? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the challenges that a lot of people don't appreciate is that uh, NASA doesn't hire very often. They, they have a very um, um, limited opening slots? Unaggressive approach to hiring. And the reason for that is because um, they have very limited openings and no one's leaving. Um, and That's so true. the government uh, doesn't want them to grow uh, uh, too large. Uh, you know, and so as a result, um, they rarely hire in many cases. And so whenever you interview in NASA, unlike a perhaps a technology company, uh, the, the interviews there can be quite extensive. I remember having multiple rounds and presenting, um, uh, giving a talk and presenting my work and then having ample opportunity for people to question and, and ask over the span of about a week. Um, and it, 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 it was eight years ago, so I don't remember everything in detail, but I <laughs> I think Aini and I can imagine the, the stress and yeah, the, stress, the amount the of rounds, anxiety. the anxiety, like all. Oh. <laughs> so basically, doctor, once you're in NASA, once you're accepted in NASA, that's it. You commit your whole life to NASA because you said early on that nobody ever leaves NASA. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I would say nobody ever leaves, but um, but it is true that um, uh, uh, we have a we are diverse not just in um, um, uh, how we look and how we think, but also in age. I will say. However, it is true if you walk into a cafeteria in a NASA lab, you'll see a lot of older people because they're <laughs> staying there for you know a good portion. Forever, of basically. It's very. Um, which may not be the case when you go to a company uh, yeah. in many cases yeah. because they tend to hire younger people. That's and, and true. Right, yeah. That's true. Um, okay, but most importantly, doctor, we need to know how is the office like at NASA? Is it just like in the movies? <laughs> like early on, we said we grew up watching the American movies. Yeah. So we yes. have a certain image of how a NASA office should look like. So I'm very yeah. Is it like that? Yeah, like if you have movies? watched some of the most recent famous movies, um, yeah. Let's see, I can think of one in Mars, for example. Um, uh, then you're getting a very good uh, picture of what NASA uh, looks like. Um, for oh. example, Mars movie that was uh, maybe uh, 
uh, in theaters a few years ago that depicts you know, how one might live in Mars. I forget the name of the movie. Yeah. Uh, the, they were trying to depict the how the offices and the workplace at, at JPL in Pasadena look like. And so the, the way the directors would interact with the staff members, mm. if you remember, it was very informal and um, you know straight to the point, uh, trying to solve problems together. It's very much the culture that we have here. And so I think the movies have tried to depict, some of them have tried to depict uh, the style. <laughs> so yeah. if you watch the movies, you've probably got you know, some sense of, of what the work culture is here. It is very um, or, um, organic. Um, problems are solved as a group uh, yeah. is what I'm trying to refer to. And it's rarely that you will see a top-down type of um, 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 like solution to the problem. Right. It's not okay. very structured like that. Okay. One of the reasons why we've been able to push the boundaries of uh, science and engineering is because um, it's more of a, a, a group um, effect on, on technology development and problem solving as opposed to a top-down. You know, NASA has had its fair share of uh, successes and failures. And one of the things that they, that they remind us is that a lot of the uh, major failures we've had uh, as an organization early in the days, you know, in the 20s, yeah. 30s, 40s, 50s, were due to the top-down approach where um, you know, leadership or management thinks they know how to solve a problem. And so I think NASA has learned the hard way that they need to be a more organic and, um, and, and, and accept the collective knowledge of the group uh, of people uh, to, to be where, it, uh, where things need to go. So when we work on a challenging problem, it is very common for us to bring in large groups of people from our institute. Um, How large is large? How many at minimum? Oh, at minimum, I would say, you know, uh, if you're working on a very straightforward, simple problem, but you're not clear about what the approach is and someone thinks we need to have a, a review, it could be as many as uh, 20 or 30 being the minimum. That's a lot. That's, that's a big number. Yep, yep. We, we, just like in, you might see in the movies. We yeah, just like in the movies, exactly. Room. Yeah, you stick them into the conference room and, you know, um, that collective um, uh, knowledge that a group of experts might come bring it, maybe may give you a very different outlook on yeah. the problem and how to solve it than you might have on your own. So so it is very helpful when, um, and, and uh, to have that, you know, a group of experts that can talk about a problem. And partly also diversity plays a role here because um, you need the diversity of thoughts, opinions, uh, when you're dealing with a difficult problem, especially for the type of problems that we have, because many of these are not things that you can touch and feel, you know, mm. uh, about, you know, what is the hydrogen concentration in <laughs> Venus? Uh, yeah. It's not like you can, you know, grab those particles and feel them. So. Yeah. The, thought and, and, and knowledge that needs to be brought to the forefront to, to, to understand that. So because of that, our culture has been one that embraces diversity in NASA. That so Doc, cool. uh, I'm pretty sure Irene has this question too in her mind. <laughs> I mean, on her mind, but uh, do you believe in aliens? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, say that there, again. Are, are there believe? any aliens? Are aliens? <laughs> do you believe in well, it? Well, um, not that I know of. Have you seen? <laughs> I have not seen any. Uh, certainly not in the in, in NASA. But uh, I mean, I, okay, not so, in NASA, so, but, okay, um, so, so so my next question would be: So there are no spaceships at the office? Like yeah. none, zero, <laughs> zero spaceships. None in the you... office. None. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's one, and like you so used sad. to admit it. <laughs> I'm so sad. We were just watching Interstellar. <laughs> so, Doc, do you, do you watch Inter have you watched Interstellar? Do you believe in gravity and binary coordinates? <laughs> oh, I believe in gravity, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and and bi binary coordinates as well. Those are uh, all, all, all true. But I'm, I'm not sure if I, perhaps if I can recall the movie Interstellar, I'm not sure if the ending fits uh, in yeah. Just the, yeah, the, the yeah. Science that we are <laughs> However, I think it's a very good movie. <laughs> um, yeah, it is a okay, good movie. Okay, doctor. Um, earlier on, you 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 mentioned something about NASA pushing boundaries. You know, NASA is all about pushing boundaries. So, how mm -hmm. far 
do you go like how you know how deep do you push for it like how how far do you go how much is too much in pushing the boundary well i mean i think that's a good question and actually it's i'll be very honest i think that's a very difficult question um as well mm. here's the reason why because um when when we as an um intelligent um and highly educated community comes together to, mm. to be a problem we there needs to be some reasoning uh, um uh that is uh in all of us in terms of where do we uh stop because yeah unfortunately in the world we live in today which i think is going to be very uh, uh obvious here is that we have the limitations of resources mm. um uh, funds or, or, or research, research dollars in this case, and time. So um, you always have to ask yourself, um, have you, um, is this a dead end? Or have you, do you know enough about a problem um, for you to move on? And I think that's a very difficult thing. And it's, um, it's, it's, it's a very different response from one challenge or one problem to the other, because you need to apply a filter to, to help you understand, you know, yeah. the difference of that problem yeah. so for instance if you are if if it's an open-ended question like um uh, can you fly a helicopter in mars which we will have a helicopter there soon um really that's given, amazing given the, yeah given the um you know, air concentration and 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 the atmosphere is it possible that's a broader question and right. so mm -hmm. you can push quite far down because there may be yeah. many many approaches that can be brought to bear to, to, to uh, maybe tackle that. But if it's something that is more specific, mm. um, um, such as uh, um, does Venus have oxygen in the atmosphere? Mm. Right? Then perhaps you don't have to um, you know, push too hard and yeah. you know where to stop um, mm -hmm. on the evidence that you have. So I think it's, it's very different. Uh, how far you go is very different um, based on what that question is, basically. But has there been an incident where, um, you know, someone someone in the office went too far and then one of them, okay, you know what, it's, we, we're pushing it now, so we have to stop. Yeah. There are some instances there, but remember, one of the things that is very nice about um, uh, a research lab like NASA is that we are truly answerable to ourselves in the end. Um, so why that is valuable is because you know, we are free to continue investigating. And I, I take home uh, many of my problems and I keep thinking about them. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it, but there are instances, you're right, where, you know. Someone went too far and you yeah, just have, you yeah, know what, yeah. that's a bit too that's much too right there, my friend. Much. Yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah, stop yeah, there. Yeah. That can happen. That can happen. That can happen. <sighs> Doc, so NASA, Na NASA is known for offering opportunities. What's one opportunity you wish everyone knew about so they can be involved with, with uh, NASA? Um, but by opportunity, do you mean uh, opportunity for work there? Is that what you mean? Yeah, for work. Yeah, for work. Yeah. So, you know, NASA is actually um, uh, federally funded in the U.S., um, mm. although collaborate with a large number of um, uh, 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 global institutes um, mm. are at the, in the US, we are nationally funded. So the challenge with the nationally funded programs is that um, the opportunity for one to work there becomes um, somewhat uh, limited based on uh, what type of uh, citizenship you have. And I think mm. it's one of the first uh, probably um, challenges that you will see. But however, however nevertheless, uh, some NASA centers like NASA JPL, there's a few centers, uh, NASA centers in the US and JPL is mm. one of them, um, uh, have um, really broad ability to uh, provide opportunities to even foreign nationals like myself. Mm. So if you go to NASA lab like JPL, you'll see also a lot of uh, um, diversity in terms of people from where they come from. There mm -hmm. are opportunities there for work. Um, there's you know, multiple programs that, that hire uh, graduate students, postdocs, oh, and even staff scientists like yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, 
it's very common for these to be uh, advertised um, on the websites and things like that. Um, it, is, it is, aside from that, NASA um, also provides a large number of uh, funding opportunity to uh, faculty and research staff that might be um, you know, at different universities that may be interested to write proposals, collaborate and work on challenging problems. So it's quite common in my line of work to, 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 to work with faculty that you know, may be in a different university, uh, interested in some of the problems I'm working on and collaborate with them and then uh, have opportunities develop to fund their research there as well. Wow, doctor. Okay, as we're all aware, NASA is always constantly exploring new planets. So what solar system destination are you eager for NASA to explore? Well, uh, okay, the, how many do we have out there? <laughs> so the audience uh, know. How many solar system do we have out there? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, see, I, I, that's why I, 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 because I had this conversation I'll Google with my friend. It for you, I'll Google it for you know, I had this but conversation yeah. with my friend and then she was like, we have more than one. I'm like, well, yeah, we definitely have more than one. That's what NASA is all about. Yeah, so I mean, this is a very good question. I think there's a lot, we don't know exactly how many, I think. Um, and then there's a lot of work going into dark energy now. Mm. I think um, at the very moment, uh, there's a few things in my mind, but uh, dark energy ranks very, very high. Oh, a, dark energy, I read this somewhere. I, I, I think I've read this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so if you, if you all collect all energy. the energy um, that we see uh, on earth, um, yeah. when we out into the solar system and beyond yeah um, we, can see, uh, we can collect energy from from the star from um, a, a, wow. the mass, do a mass balance basically like, what we yeah. find is that a, a, about a half of the energy is 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 in what is missing basically and is what we call dark energy oh, uh, nice. a, 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 a large chunk of, um, of, of mass that we don't see uh, that is just around around us, and this is being referred to as dark energy. And there is a large uh, effort now to start to study these things um, and to study what might uh, what might hold for the physics of the universe if there is if indeed half of the universe is dark, meaning we can't see them. Mm. People feel that all that energy and mass is stuck in black holes that are just yes, all- black, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so um, what is a black hole? What does that mean? Yeah. Where yeah. is mass going and, and where do they end up? These are all kind of big questions that I think we know nothing about. And I think that's very oh. interesting to find out because it may tell us something um, far greater than what we know of today as, as uh, that the universe is composed of. Um, all the things you heard in the 20s and 30s from and beyond from uh, you know, things like Einstein's work in terms yeah. of uh, black hole gravitational forces mm. pull one in, um, time travel, perhaps wormholes that might connect yeah. one universe to the other, all of these are not impossible. Um, but so little about them and studying dark energy may be the one um, way to help us understand some of these things um, unfortunately I, the best way to study like, dark energy is through yeah, yeah. quantum phenomena uh, yeah. and quantum physics so we need yeah. to develop new sensors to study the the, the quantum phenomena uh, that arises in dark uh, with dark energy and so we're pushing need to push the boundary of technology to study this new science basically this goes back to the earlier statement where you where you said about nasa pushing boundaries so this is the sort of boundaries that we're talking about black holes wormholes yes. yes this is an example of that this is a very good example of that because this is something that we don't understand well but we want to we yeah. have um educated our leaders uh, about it mm. uh, including members of the Congress and in the U.S. and, and, and also um, uh, agencies in the U.S. that understand the value of these type of research. This is the kind of thing we do routinely. 
Um, and then we we make the case and write proposals for how we are going to study this. And um, that that's this is the process for helping us um, get our ideas out, get the 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 the, the research funding to to develop sensors, um, and then uh, hopefully uh, learn something new about the universe and yeah. help the human race uh, grow because of that. That's the hope. Mm -hmm. um, in many cases, the technologies and the science that we study allows us to grow tremendously yeah. uh, because it, it it teaches us something about the universe we live in It and in many cases creates a large number of technologies that the human race can benefit from. Everything from, you know, microwaves to GPS and yeah. all yeah, of course. here today because we push the boundary of our... That's um, true. I agree. Um, Doctor, are you working on any uh, exciting project at the moment? Are you allowed to share? Um, I don't think he's allowed to share if he has. Yeah, one. there's a, there's a few different things that I'm working on. I mentioned the Oasis uh, mission yeah, where they're trying to put it uh, yeah. beneath the surface by 20 kilometers. There's uh, some very exciting work I'm working on uh, for sensors on Mars that would uh, also detect. Uh, the geophysics of the subsurface, yeah. uh, deep inside. People are very interested about what's in these planets. Yeah. Because, um, you may be able to see the surface, but and and investigate the surface, but you know very little about the interior of these planets. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I've been very captivated by that, and I've been yeah. uh, trying to advance and develop technologies for that. So everything from comets to asteroids, you know, people are very interested about what's inside these bodies. You know, yeah. if you yeah. comment, uh, you know, one problem I'm working on is if it's a comet, you know, what where does the, uh, the comet come from? Comets move around the, the, the solar system a lot. And as they do that, they collect a lot of information and material, basically, because they are, you know, icy bodies. They yeah. melt and then they become solids and then they melt again as they go <laughs> around the... Cool. As, go around the, the, the solar system, just depending on how far they are from the sun, basically. And so they gather a lot of dust and a lot of information. Um, and people are very interested about what's in these bodies. And, you know, mm -hmm. for example, find evidence of life in these bodies, or mm -hmm. can those, these bodies tell us something about the, the universe that we don't know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, even for large bodies like Mars, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, what's you know, how does the interior of these bodies uh, look and behave, and what is the uh, basic uh, uh, knowledge and science that we can learn from that? If you look at Earth, for example, the surface and the subsurface is very, very different. Yeah, um, and I've been and, learning this in school. Uh, you know, similarly, it's just like a human body, the yeah. interior of the human body is very, yeah. very different than yeah. the interior, and so I think. Um, I've been very interested in that and trying to really push the boundary of what technologies could remotely detect the interior. Of course, if you're on Earth, you could drill and, and learn That's about true. the Earth. Yeah, right? and you can just dig uh, it up. Yeah, and we, we do that a lot. We get oil that way. Um, <laughs> yes. Example. But, you know, if you're in another planet or a faraway land, how do you learn something about the interior of the planet uh, mm. without you know, having to drill or, or dig through it, right? Um, mm -hmm. One of the big challenges that I've, I've been working on over the last few years, developing new techniques that can remotely detect the, the properties of the interior, basically. Mm. But you take these samples from these planets and bring it back to uh, bring it back to Earth and examine it. You don't have to. In some cases, you could. For example, in Mars. And in other cases, you may not be able to do that. And so you need to be able to generate signals that can you know, penetrate through the surface. Why? Detect uh, based on the, these signals what the behavior are. There are many types of uh, signals that we know of that can penetrate. Uh, certain types of radio waves would penetrate certain types of materials and, and planets. Mm -hmm. uh, radio waves can certainly penetrate through asteroids and, and comets easily. Yeah. Uh, larger planets like Mars, probably you can only penetrate down to 20, 30 kilometers, maybe not too more, much more, but yeah. that can teach you a lot about the interior already. And then other signaling like neutrinos and others can penetrate through almost anything in the universe. And so you, there are methods that you can develop wow. uh, these, these bodies. So there's a large variety of different things that we know about in terms of spanning from quantum physics to electromagnetics uh, and gravity that can be used to study the behavior of the interior. For example, on on, uh, on Earth, uh, we have 
grace mission that JPL led, uh, uh, which is a NASA mission that uses just gravity fluctuations, very precise uh, instruments that detect gravity fluctuations and, and from which we can learn about uh, water and, and lakes that may be very, very deep on Earth that we cannot drill to. Wow. Uh, so it, you can use something as simple as gravity to, to yeah. tell you something about the interior of a planet and, and that is going to be very powerful to you understanding where that, what's the life cycle of that planet, what happened, you know, 10 or 100 million years ago for that planet, uh, what it means for you or for Earth and yeah. what, you know, is there anything we can learn from that or get from that, right? So there's a lot of things that can be done with, with the technologies to study science that you might not think is feasible. Yeah, I, I never right. thought that these are the kind of things that um, you, you know, you study, you, you know, you yeah, examine. I have one question, Doc, actually, my, we still have a lot, a few more questions, but have you always been so curious about science? Say that again? Have you always been so curious about science? Yeah, I have been very curious about science. Since I were a kid. Yeah, since I was a kid, I've been very um, excited and curious about that. And it's been different things. Um, mm -hmm. I, I remember as a four or five year old kid, I almost uh, uh, caused a fire in my house in Kajang because no! <laughs> old house and I, I had built um, a small helicopter when I was four years old. But you, I built could, a he you built a chopper. Yeah, I, what yeah, it's a, a tiny little power. helicopter and I couldn't get it to, it had a moto in it, but I couldn't get it to fly. So I connected it to the power grid in the house and almost what? exploded. I mean, the thought of just so building I, a helicopter, dog. Who yeah. would have thought? Well, well, well one I, time I've always I... been, I've been lucky, you know, I've been exposed in the, in the way that en enabled me to try and learn and, 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 and that has been very helpful for me. And I think it's kind of been with me all my life, but the mm -hmm. type of, so I worked on have changed over time. Yeah. Uh, well, I caught my uh, kitchen curtain on fire when I was, yeah. I think, 13. And that just traumatized, <laughs> you know, my whole life. And for you to just say casually, oh, you know, build a helicopter yeah, when he was build a cool. I built the chopper, almost <laughs> burned my house down. Yeah, I but, was maybe wow. lucky. I had parents that let, let me explore and uh, huh. guided me when I was... Uh, it, uh, I needed that, but uh, otherwise they... I hope my mom's not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Doc, um, so you you believe in astrology. <laughs> I just had to. I, we both believe. Uh, we believe we in astrology, astrology so I'm pretty yeah. sure Blackness, you, you do. You do? Yeah, yeah certainly. Yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah. To some extent, yeah. Okay, great. That's uh, really com uh, comforting to know. <laughs> because, you know, some people, they talk about science. And when, when you when you mention about astrology, they just like, you shut you off. And okay, I, I'm not going to ask you that <laughs> anymore. But it's good to know that, you know, you believe in astrology. But um, Doc, so you're from Kajang. Yeah. To go from Sate Town to Space Town, has it ever sunk in for you? I feel that, you know, Kajang was a great place to grow up because it was very, um, at least back then, before the traffic sit, uh, set in, yep. which I think is the case now. And Kajang was a very um, great place to grow up in. Mm -hmm. There were many neighborhoods, a lot of children playing together outside. Um, you learned a lot from playing outside. Um, I know my brother used to, you know, go fishing uh, when, as and when he liked. He used to go catch iguanas and, and things like that. And I played with my <laughs> friends outside all the time. And we learned so much about what, you know, the world was. Uh, uh, so I think it, it was a great place to grow up. I, of course, I miss it. It has never really sunk in like you've, you've suggested. Um, and I just feel like I had a very good childhood there. Childhood. And, uh, now I'm. I have to. Now, live now he's in NASA, guys. <laughs> now he's in NASA, and and uh, it's really different now. Fifteen years ago, it's um, fifteen years later. It's different because I think it was what two days ago. I read the news that we had. Uh, there was a, there was a flash flood a couple of days ago here in Malaysia, and mm -hmm. two days ago in Kota Irbalu. Taman Rimba, not sure if you know, but there was a crocodile just chilling by the, 
the what do you call um long kang i mean what is long kang oh wow <laughs> long kang, yeah just chilling there mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's yeah. dangerous crocodile okay not ivana yeah, yeah. not monitor lizard yeah. a legit crocodile so yeah yeah <laughs> but um, um very interesting well, um, Uh, doctor if i may elaine if i may what one last question that i have yeah, to, go for it. um i read um in an article mm-hmm. about how the earth is how the earth is moving faster for 2021 than it usually does i don't know if you i don't know if you've heard of that or was it slow no i have not heard of that you know there are however um some very natural fluctuations of, of the spin cycle and also motion of planets and earth and yeah. all people with uh, expertise in orbital mechanics can tell you that but what i do know is that there are natural fluctuations you know one of the things we need to keep in perspective is that everything on on earth uh, and every living thing really have some natural fluctuations um, okay. you know for Um, I'm sure even the color of my skin has some natural fluctuations, but it's probably too small to know. <laughs> um, and and you know gravity, uh, the gravity in where I'm sitting here is is going to have natural fluctuations. They're just too little for me to sense. And I think right. similarly the spin and the uh, rotation mechanics as well yeah, as the motion. That's the word. Yeah. There are going to be some um, some 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 natural variations, but. In many cases, um, they are controlled, uh, and how it's controlled is because there is a feedback between those variations and the um, environment as well. Right. For example, if you, if your mechanics of spin is a little uh, greater than you would you would need, mm. um, you know, wind effect and others because we have a, a strong atmosphere on Earth, mm-hmm. so the wind effects will counteract those, and maybe we'll see some change in weather patterns, perhaps. But there is a, a, fortunately, at least for Earth, there is a good cycle, um, okay. a weather cycle, and and there's atmospheres and magnetic fields and other uh, plasma effects. So we are, you know, in a bit of a cocoon, okay. and when there are some variations, there's some feedback that occurs yeah. that yeah. helps uh, balance that. Basically, yeah. yeah, because what they say is um, because of the, the the speed, the changes in speed, it makes it will make 2021 short, like faster. So we, you know, it's not going to be a long year. It's, we, we would feel it as if, wow, it's like 21, year. yeah, 2021 has gone by just like that. I just see. like how it uh, went, it it went by real fast for January. It's already 20. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's just an article so that just it just pop up, and I was like, oh, I have to ask him. I have to ask him. <laughs> But um, Doc, uh, I hope our questions aren't too heavy for you at dawn. No. <laughs> On the other side. No, I think we're doing good. Yeah, it's early morning have... here, but it, it, I'm still trying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one more, our last question for you before we let you go. I'm pretty sure you know what's uh, been happening here in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we have to ask all our guests this question: Do you think there's still hope for our country here in Malaysia? Yeah, I, I think there is. Um, you know, one of the things that I've seen in my limited career is that sometimes you have to go through the darkest parts to get to the light. The black hole. Black hole. The dark. What? The dark yeah. hole. <laughs> the and black it hole. Applies, dark energy. Yeah, and and it applies in everything in in life. Yeah. I think. It applies in your work, your research, in my case, and also in just how society behaves and what we see out of. Uh, society and I think there's a lot of hope in Malaysia. Um, there's there is a lot of great diversity. Um, there are good people. Um, there are you know uh, uh, a lot of exciting things in the future for Malaysia simply because uh, Malaysia is still a young nation. It is, yeah. Um, and there is plenty of opportunity. To get onto um, uh, 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 to, to to develop a society mm. that is you know going to be very successful in the future. I think Malaysia is a young country because um, uh, we are still early in the uh, uh, in relative to some other countries in terms of a, for a diverse society to be living together. Um, mm-hmm. America, where I live in. 
has had this the diversity we've had for a few hundred years um and and we are still struggling with it but we are doing doing well but we're still struggling with it i think malaysia needs to to to, to learn how to embrace that and perhaps um um you know find a way where people can be um, um understanding of each other comfortable but able and, and to, to create uh, um, uh, good things and a future for themselves. I do really feel that there's a lot of hope. Uh, I do think that people need to be uh, aware that there is a lot of hope and, and have to, uh, start thinking uh, what can 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 I do to, to exactly help, uh, you're right it all the, starts with yourself. Direction. Yeah that's what it, it comes down to if you feel that you can there is hope and there is something that you can do to, to help then there are probably others that feel that way yeah. um there's probably once you have a collective uh, uh uh sense of that i think the society can can move in a direction that's going to be very positive for for all of those who live in malaysia mm -hmm. I, i certainly feel that way when i grew up in malaysia i was very lucky because my two best friends was you know um 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 uh, Malay and the Chinese, and yeah. I that because I was Indian, uh, we grew up together, understanding each other very well. We yeah. were friends from I think we were three or four years old when we started playing together, and we did mm. my, my schooling together, and we stay, still stay in touch today. Yeah. So we are very very close, and when I think about our friendship and how our lives have evolved, um, and I know they feel the same way. They, we really feel that there's a lot of hope in in Malaysia because. We were, even though we were very different, um, both our skin color and perhaps our some of our cultures, um, mm. uh, we knew how to embrace each other's differences very yeah. well, and we I loved agree. each other for it. Um, and when you are able to do that, then you can learn from from each someone. Other. Yeah, yeah. You. And I think that is where it the hope really lies because. We uh, uh, Malaysian needs, Malaysians and and Malaysia needs to come together, uh, embrace it, and mm -hmm. learn uh, how to uh, improve the the state of the country as well as the uh, society and, and culture where they live in. That is totally possible. Um, I think that there is certainly hope. Mm. Well, we certainly need to get you on. And the next uh, episode in the future and touch on astrology, right? I, I mean, feel like I'm in the wrong industry, to be honest. Right? I feel like Dr. Darmin's I work feel so is more interesting. Interesting than us hosting. <laughs> no, not really. Um, I love my job. I need. <laughs> oh, all those, you know, pushing boundaries. It's all about pushing boundaries. And I like that. And like discovering other solar systems that we don't know of. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. And Aini and I, we talk a lot about, you know, energies and what is out there. And mm. to be able to speak to you, uh, again, we apologize that it's so early there. And to have mm -hmm. you on. I was um, so looking forward. I was so looking forward <laughs> for, for, for this um, segment. I was like, no, we have, we have to do it. We have to do it. Yeah, likewise, But, uh, I was very excited to speak to, to all of you as well. And yes, I'm interested in... in in energy as well, because I think that's one of the uh, uh, things that we're still learning uh, in terms yeah. of what, uh, how do we uh, harvest and use all the various forms of energy that yeah. some of us are not tapping into yet. I agree. You, we're you definitely know. getting you on the show again. Again, yeah. <laughs> But thank you so much, Doc. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so and much. I, I, really, I, I learned a lot tonight. Thank you. Too. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks for um, having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Wow, Elaine, how different was the topic of discussion for tonight? Uh, earlier segment with uh, Datuk Sri really Nazir Razak. Kita cakap tentang ekonomi, <laughs> cakap pasal foreign investment, <laughs> and then on our second segment, kita cakap pasal time yeah. travel, <laughs> black holes, going to Mars, Venus. Do I have feel smart now. Huh? Do, do you feel smart now? Yeah. <laughs> I have learned so much from both our guests tonight. Me too. I'm I'm, I'm still start struck, Aini. But do you think we've time traveled to episode 10, which is tonight? Uh, actually, we might have. Yeah, because Dr. Darmin actually did mention about time traveling, kan? 
and then the, I mean, he did not deny about you know whether time travel does exist or doesn't exist. Did I deny pun? I did agree pun. Tapi let's just assume that maybe time travel does exist. Give me goosebumps now. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, this is why we do what we do. We share with Rakyat Malaysia. So please reach out to us at hope at the unity show.com. We want you to be yourself. We want you to showcase your talent. Let it be singing, acting, painting. We create something out of nothing. We want the entire nation to know you. We'll do our best, whatever it takes for you to be seen and heard. Progress often comes in small increment, but we should always believe that ordinary people like us, like Lian and I, can still achieve me. extraordinary things for our yeah. country when we rise as one. Mm-hmm. So I need never lose hope. Keep the yeah. faith. Spread the faith. Let's join hands and build a better a land. A better land. Selamat malam. <laughs> Selamat malam. Jumpa next week. Jumpa next week. <laughs>